Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Got your questions from Twitter.com slash Aaron Rift. Now, I would like to note that if you are going to submit questions, please use the hashtag NoDQNAV. That way I can keep track of the questions since I'm planning to use the Aaron Rift Twitter account for raw coverage and pay-per-view coverage. It's just easier for me to find your questions. Now that I got that out of the way, let's get down to your questions. First one comes from A. Aaron Rift Guy. What are your thoughts on Raw's opening and how many former GMs do you see returning to cut promos? I had mixed feelings about that segment. You had, of course, Teddy Long coming out and botching his promo. He talked about wanting to make a disqualification match. Clearly, Teddy Long's not an ODQ guy, but whatever. Then you had Stephanie coming out and acting like a heel, even though last week she was a babyface. The whole segment felt like a train wreck to me. As far as other GMs coming out or former GMs coming out to make their cases for being the new GM, I could see that as a possibility. I know Eric Bischoff has a new DVD coming out soon. Would not surprise me to see him come back and then Stephanie can talk down to him and put herself over like she's been doing the last few weeks. Who knows? I guess it's a way to build up towards the brand split by having the past general manager personality show up. It's a cheap ploy by WWE just to get interest in the brand split. I'm hoping that in the end, whatever WWE does, whether it's have GMs or have Stephanie wrong SmackDown and Shane running Raw, I just hope that WWE has a plan for this storyline long term. And that's really what's key to the brand extension succeeding. But I guess it was cool to see Teddy Long, and it would be cool to see Eric Bischoff in a cameo role. I just hope that in the end, the brand split is something meaningful. This one comes from Dil Dylan Guy. Hey Aaron, is it bad if these Teddy Long things have been the best thing about Raw tonight? I would not say Teddy Long's promo on the stage was the best part of Raw, although I will say that the backstage segment with Teddy Long and Stephanie was a better segment. I liked the fact that Teddy suggested the fatal four-way tag team match for Money in the Bank, and then Stephanie kicked him out and then called up the, the marketing person and made the match for Money in the Bank, basically stealing Teddy Long's idea. I thought that that was well done, but still, I'm really confused about what Stephanie McMahon is doing right now, what her character is. Is she a good guy or a good girl? Is she a bad girl or is she just the girl? I have no idea. The whole thing is very confusing. Like I said, it was interesting to see Teddy Long, but I think that the segments, for the most part, could have been executed better. This one comes from Billy Bravo. Why is WWE killing AJ Styles, making him look like he cannot win one on his own? Hoping he goes over at money, money in the Bank, but not looking good. That was a very interesting segment with AJ Styles and John Cena. You had John Cena putting down AJ Styles, saying that AJ appeared at the Royal Rumble and did nothing, and then brought up how AJ failed to win the WWE title and his run so far has been a bust. Not exactly my way of doing things. I would not portray one of your top stars like AJ Styles as a bust. I would not write that into the script. That's just me. I guess that's John Cena's MO. That's his way of doing things. And like AJ said, this was his rebuttal. Guys like you bury guys like me. Very interesting line. WWE kind of breaking the fourth wall with the insider references. It certainly succeeded in making me interested in the Money in the Bank match. I'm curious to see how this plays out, but my fear is that it's going to play out the same way it has played out time and time again. Maybe AJ Styles will win the first match and everyone will say, Hey look, AJ Styles is getting this huge rub off of John Cena. But then, before you know it, AJ Styles loses, then loses again, then loses again, and in the end, John Cena prevails, like John Cena always prevails. I mentioned this in the previous video. I'm hoping we see something different. I'm hoping when this feud is over, AJ Styles is a bigger star than before, 
And I'd love to see AJ win the feud and really get one over on John Cena. I'm not getting my hopes up that that will happen, but I think that that would be the best way to go. Even though AJ Styles and John Cena are close age-wise, AJ Styles, if he can stay healthy, has a lot of years ahead in WWE and can be a top player for many years to come, and he's the fresh face. I think John Cena can benefit from losing a feud. It's not going to kill John Cena, but AJ Styles being the loser in this feud could certainly do some damage to his character long term in WWE. This one comes from Brett. Why hasn't Roman Reigns, or why wasn't Roman Reigns on Raw? I'm not a fan of him, but he is the World Heavyweight Champion, but we get video packages instead. It's not necessary for Roman Reigns to be live in front of the crowd on every single show. You have to keep in mind that for years, we've had episodes of Raw where a champion would not appear. I remember when building up to the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels match at Survivor Series, they had one show where they just featured video packages. I think I think Bret and Shawn might have still appeared on the shows, maybe not. Actually, I think um, the last show before Survivor Series, Bret was not on that show. To me, it's not the end of the world that Roman Reigns was not on Raw. I think that the segments did more to build up Money in the Bank than last week on Raw when you had Seth Rollins basically doing nothing, acting like he was going to get in the ring, and then just went to the back and then teased it again and then went to the back again. I thought that the video packages were way more effective in getting people hyped up for Money in the Bank. The big issue, of course, is the video packages made me want to cheer for Seth Rollins more than Roman Reigns, but that's a, a whole other topic. Roman Reigns was not on Raw because it wasn't necessary. This one comes from Frederick Taylor. Hey Aaron, please answer in video if you want, but would you say this year's Money in the Bank card from top to bottom is better looking than WrestleMania 32? I would say so. I'm definitely looking forward to Money in the Bank more than WrestleMania at this point. We still have one week to go. WWE could screw everything up, but on paper, this could be one of the biggest shows of the year. And if I wasn't preoccupied that weekend, I would have definitely made the trip to Las Vegas for this show. This is going to be an awesome card and you really should go if you're anywhere near Las Vegas or you have the funds to travel to Las Vegas. This should be a hell of a show to watch live. You have the Money in the Bank match which is almost guaranteed to be great. You have Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns which should be great. Once again, almost a guarantee. It would be really hard at least in the ring for that match to be a disaster and Maybe if we're lucky, they'll have a good story to tell with that match. Same thing with John Cena versus AJ Styles. Should be technically a great match, uh, and it's a matter of the storyline and how WWE pushes these characters moving forward. But on paper, just looking at the card, this year's Money in the Bank looks awesome and should be a tremendous show. This one comes from David. Do you see... Do you see fans getting tired of Sami Zayn's underdog gimmick since it has already been done? I actually liked Del Rio going over on Raw. The underdog gimmick has been done many times, and it will be done many times in the future. I do not think that that will be a factor in Sami Zayn losing interest from fans. I think if anything hurts Sami Zayn, it's his booking. And I think as the new character, it's okay for him to lose. But at the same time, he should be winning. I, I'm fine with somebody beating him. I guess I have a little bit of an issue with Del Rio beating him just because I feel Del Rio really means nothing at this stage of the game. If Sami Zayn's going to lose to somebody, I'd rather he lose to a Kevin Owens or even a Rusev who's at least the US champion. It just feels like Del Rio's going nowhere. And I'm not sure what you do with Del Rio at this point. But having him beat Sami Zayn, I feel it does nothing for Del Rio, and it certainly does nothing for Sami Zayn. It just felt like it did nothing for either guy, and that's not how it should be. I'm hoping that Money in the Bank will elevate both guys, you know, a great performance from each each individual, Sami Zayn and Alberto Del Rio, all the guys in that match. Everybody could benefit from that match, and I'm hoping that WWE can come up with something for Alberto Del Rio. I mean, he needs a good storyline to really 
get his character back on the right track, but him beating Sami Zayn, I just feel it doesn't do anything for him. And the fact that Del Rio came out there on Raw and got no reaction from the crowd, and then he beats Sami Zayn, I just felt it wasn't good for Sami Zayn to lose to a guy that gets no crowd reaction. And that, that, is, the, that is the fact that Del Rio isn't connecting with the audience for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's him or not, or if it's just WWE hasn't been able to figure something out for the guy. I mean, League of Nations did him no favor. So, yeah, I, I honestly am not sure what you do with Del Rio at this point. This one comes from Big Ryan. Hey, Aaron, with the constant mentioning of the Shield on Raw, is WWE setting us up for a Shield triple threat? This question is like every time there's blood on Raw, people ask me if the Attitude Era is coming back. It's certainly interesting that... WWE is doing this tease for next week's Raw with a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion. And of course, I'm sure that Dean Ambrose will mention that he could potentially win Money in the Bank and maybe cash it in on Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. If this was 15 years ago, I would say that there's definitely going to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion because years ago, WWE would always deliver on a tease. WWE would not tease something and then fail to deliver. But now, 2015, 2016, whatever year it is, modern WWE, I could see them teasing something and then we never have any reference from it again. We keep mentioning the idea of a shield triple threat. You guys keep sending me questions. I keep answering. It could happen, but at the same time, in WWE, I'm not, I'm not expecting anything. I, I could see it happening. I could see it not happening. Anything's possible at this point. And I really doubt that this tease for next week is any real indication one way or another if there's going to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. triple threat match. I think WWE just came up with it. Somebody said, hey, let's, let's do a segment with the three S.H.I.E.L.D. members. And, you know, whatever happens the next week or the week after, that's still, that's still up in the air. This one comes from RKO Fan. Could you see Seth Rollins winning the title with the help of the club and joining them at Money in the Bank? I think it's unlikely. I think that because Seth Rollins hasn't been involved with the club, he was never a part of that group, it wouldn't really make sense for him to join those guys. I think that it would also make AJ Styles less important if, if Seth Rollins joined the group, he would likely become the leader and AJ would be the secondary character in the group. I think it's better for AJ to be the leader and I think it's better for the group to remain elite with three guys unless you want to bring in Finn Balor who has a past with the Balor Club or the Bullet Club or the Club or the Bullet Club or whatever WWE is calling them. I think it's unlikely. I don't see it happening. And quite frankly, I think Seth Rollins is better off being a babyface at this point. So I, I think if anything's going to happen, Seth Rollins will be turning babyface soon rather than staying a heel as a leader of a heel group or a co-leader. This one comes from Frab212. Hey, Aaron, long-time viewer, first-time asker. Do you think that WWE could sign Ricochet and and Osprey after their viral match at New Japan Pro Wrestling. I would be shocked if both guys do not end up in WWE at some point. I think both of them are extremely talented. That match was absolutely insane. Those guys can do things that I did not even think were possible. Those two are just remarkable athletes and I think it's inevitable with all the buzz that they have gotten and of course Ricochet in Lucha Underground is Prince Puma he's gotten a lot of attention there I, I think it's inevitable that not just one but both of those guys will end up in WWE soon and like I said before with guys like Samoa Joe and Finn Balor likely going to the main roster soon WWE is going to need new people in NXT to fill the void. And I think those two guys would fit in very well. I, I would be surprised if those guys are not in WWE by the next year or so. This one comes from WWE Lewis. 
Hey Aaron, if Conor McGregor does have one match in WWE, who would you like to see it against and why? For me, it has to be Sheamus. I think that if you were going to bring in somebody like Conor McGregor, I mean, at first I, I thought about this question and at first my, my gut feeling was that Conor McGregor should go in there against the very top superstar in WWE, whether it's Roman Reigns or John Cena. But when I think about it, if Conor McGregor is going to come into WWE for one match, it's almost certain that Conor McGregor will win that match. You know, when Floyd Mayweather came into WWE, obviously he was winning. So WWE put him in there against somebody like Big Show. WWE did not put Floyd Mayweather in there against somebody like John Cena. So thinking about it like that, somebody like Sheamus actually makes perfect sense. I would put in an upper mid-card heel that isn't one of the top stars in the company, but is a big enough star where it'll be an interesting matchup. And I think Sheamus would be a good choice. Somebody like Sheamus or Rusev or going back to earlier, even Del Rio, if WWE can build up Del Rio again, he might be a good guy to face against Conor McGregor. But of course, the whole Irish thing seems to make sense. So yeah, that, that would be an interesting match. This one comes from B Money. What was your initial thoughts and reaction on the Bash at the Beach 2000 incident involving Hogan and Russo when it first happened? Like everyone else, I was shocked. I mean, that was definitely out of left field, although by that point, you never knew what you were getting with WCW. Anything was possible, but for Vince Russo to come out there and trash Hulk Hogan and Booker T winning the title at the end of the show, that was something nobody could have predicted. And I was intrigued. Unfortunately, there wasn't any kind of solid follow-up. You thought that WCW was maybe going to have a new beginning and they were hitting the reset button and things were going to be better in WCW, but then a week later, it was back to the old WCW, the same old BS and swerves and all the constant insider references and things changing on a weekly basis, titles changing every week, and no sense of direction. So yeah, watching that segment, I was shocked, and then I was intrigued, and then a week later, I'm like, this is all a waste of time. It's just the same old WCW. That'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. Subscribe to my personal channel at youtube.com slash Aaron Rift. Send in questions, use the hashtag NoDQNAV. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time for more NoDQNA video.